it's really important to throw yourself in the in the ring. I'm not going to tell myself no. They got to tell me no before I leave, right? Then Ooh. two, understand what is how is your business benefiting the community? How are you providing job opportunities? How are you generating revenue? Because they want to make sure that you are a profitable business, right? Some people don't care if you're a profitable business, but I think is but a lot of them do. And I think it's really important to showcase how profitable and how you've used this money to snowball into bigger into bigger snowballs, into an avalanche at this point, right? Mm -hmm. um, and um, a third one is understanding the power of social media and really investing in it. Trust me, as they want to see, they want to see your business in action. You're listening to the Black to Business Podcast, an educational podcast providing Black entrepreneurs with the tools and resources to start and grow their businesses. We chat with vetted Black entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and business owners as they provide tips and resources to help take your business to the next level. I'm your host, Monique T. Marshall. Welcome back. I am so excited about today's episode because it's all about how to get free money for your business. Yes, you heard it right. Free 99 money. So when we say free money, we mean business grants. And today you're going to learn all about how to secure business grants by sharing your brand story. So recently I had the pleasure of reconnecting with today's guest, Paulana Lamanier, at a workshop she hosted here in Brooklyn at the co-working space Brooklyn Commons. And at this workshop, Paulana shared her step-by-step -step process to securing over $200,000 in business grants for her company, Black People Will Swim, which is a purpose-driven organization working to smash the stereotypes that Black people don't swim. And I want to add that Paulana has done this in such a short amount of time because she started her company during the COVID-19 pandemic, so very recently, and she's had some great success. So at this workshop, I learned so much and I also invited a friend who actually started doing her business plan the very next day because she was so pumped up from Paulana's workshop. So you can just imagine the value that Paulana provided. And she really broke it down. So I was like, I have to have her on the podcast to share all these gems with the family, with you. And the beautiful thing about today's conversation is that Paulana is going to share exactly why you don't have to have it all together before you start applying for grants and how it doesn't matter what stage of business you are in, you are ready to start applying for grants. You're going to learn a lot. So let's go ahead and dive in. Paulana, welcome to the Black to Business podcast. So excited about today's conversation and welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here. Yes. So today is all about um, brand story because I know you've had a lot of success in securing grants. And I recently attended one of your workshops at Brooklyn Commons and I learned so much. So I thought I have to have her on the show because you really broke it down. So I'm excited yeah. that you're going to break it down today for my audience. <laughs> but before we get started, I always like to ask my guests if you could just share a little bit about who you are, what is it that you do in your business, and how did you get where you are today? Sure. So my name is Paulana Lamounier. I am the founder of Black People Will Swim, where we are a mission um, and purpose-driven organization created to smashing the stereotype that Black people don't swim through our acronym FACE, encouraging our community to face their fears. Um, and last year we launched our, we've been in business since 2019. I mean, yeah, 2019. Last summer we launched our five week pilot swim program and where we taught over 60 individuals how to swim, which was amazing. And this year, you know, we're hoping to double the stakes and, you know, save and change more lives. I love it. I love it. So, as I mentioned before, you've gotten a lot of grants um, with your business, but you also talk about doing so through a powerful brand story. So I want to start by asking you, what is a brand story and why do you think it's important for businesses to have a powerful brand story? I think it's really important to have a brand story for the simple fact that people want something and they would like to patron in something that they can relate to. 
Um, a lot of times, you know, you purchasing a product or purchasing something is one thing, but I think nowadays people want to understand the story behind it, how it was made, what did it take to create it, um, how long you've been in business, who's the person behind the business. Um, I think that plays a huge role and it makes it more satisfying. Like, wow, if I am purchasing a product from, you know, a brand and they're, they're manufactured in Haiti, like for example, Creole Essence. It's just like you have you, you feel this you feel like you're giving back to the community right because you are helping a business provide more job opportunities in a country that job opportunities are very scarce right mm-hmm. and so I think when it comes down to your brand story it's figuring out well how did this story come about and everyone's brand story is different. Mm-hmm. I think it's really, really important to understand that my brand story is not going to be the same as Pinky Cole. It's not going to be the same as Morgan DeBond. It's not going to be the same as Jeff Lindor. Like everyone's story is different. So I think there's power in owning your story, what makes you unique and what makes your product unique. I love that. Everyone's story is different and that's what's going to attract people to you. So what do you think are, for someone who is listening, some of the key elements that they should have in their brand story and some of the ways that they can start to develop that brand story? That's a good question. I want you, for someone who's listening and they're trying to figure out like what's their brand story, figure out why. Why are you doing this? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then most importantly, what is the problem that you're solving? You know, what what is it that makes entrepreneurs, they essentially go into businesses for a number of reasons, right? But a lot of them is solving a problem. What is the issue at hand that is in front of you? And what is your product or service or business doing to solve that problem? Once you figure it out, that's what is what makes you irreplaceable. That is what makes you um, different in the market because whatever industry you're in, the market is going to be crowded regardless, right? Right. I think that's what makes you different is figuring out this is the problem that we are addressing head first and this is our why this is what we're doing it and then how you're doing it also takes it a step further let me tell you something slutty vegan i'm a fan of pinky cole and what she's been doing right now right you <laughs> yes. know, she's been in the news she has a 25 million dollar investment yes. and her business is now pre- valued at 100 million dollars and she started it literally four years ago but here's the thing her concept Burgers and fries, it's not different, right? It's Mm -hmm. really not different. However, her product is different. She's not only selling a vegan, um, introducing people to a vegan lifestyle, but it's how she's doing it. It's all about the experience, right? And so it's an experience. And I've eaten from Slutty Vegan before, and it's a vibe when you get there from the food Mm -hmm. down to the tasting. Now, you can provide an experience, but if the product is not good, honey, (laughs) it's kind of like, well, what's the point? So right. I think when you as an entrepreneur or, you know, if you're starting a side hustle or a business or whatever you're thinking about, or if you, even if you're consulting somebody, you know, really think about your why, how you're doing it and what you're doing it to make it different in the market. Yes. And Paulana, what role do you think transparency plays in developing your brand story? That's a good question. I think it really depends on the individual, how transparent they want to be. As for me, I think transparency, that's just who I am. That is the nature, that is the DNA of me, of being transparent, because I believe that, um, you know, you never know who can relate to your story. You never know Mm -hmm. the freedom and the permission you're giving somebody else just by telling your story. Um, So for me, transparency plays a huge role, but for other people, it may not because, you know, the foundation foundation of their business may not <laughs> be all that great either, right? Right. But that's kind of where it depends on the lessons that you've learned. If your foundation or the, how you started your business, was, business wasn't all that great, but you've learned something from it and that way you can pay it forward for others, I think it's okay to share that. Like, yo, this is the mistakes I made. Here's mm-hmm. how you can learn from me too. But it all depends on how, how comfortable the person may be because some people may weaponize that. Right. Yeah, certainly true. Mm-hmm. So, so you have, as I mentioned, I had the chance to attend your workshop. And one of the things was that you've been able to secure over $200,000 in funding for Black People Swim. And how 
have you used your story to secure it? I know you've done that through grants, correct? Yes. Yes. So how have you used your your story to like secure these grants? And I know you talk about the SOAR method, if you could touch on what that is. Yeah. So, you know, when you say it, I still am in like disbelief. <laughs> Crazy. Like, yeah, we really secure <laughs> Your cane funding, and I want to touch upon why I shared the number because sometimes when mm-hmm. you grow up in a uh, Caribbean culture, you know, it's kind of like not frowned upon, but they kind of tell you to not share, you know, how much money you make or how much money you've made, or as a business or as an entrepreneur. But the reason why I'm sharing that number is because. I want to let people know that the resources are out there. The resources right. are out there, but it needs to get to the right people. And that's so important, right? If you have a grant fund and only five people know about it, are you really serving and helping people? Mm-hmm. So right. um, so that's, you know, I really want to touch on that because I know people tend to get hesitant. And, and that's also to remind myself as well. Like I'm, I shared that number for a reason of what's possible because right. what I'm doing is, is not impossible. Um, and so as it relates to my brand story, I really, I'm simply put, I'm in the business of saving lives. Mm -hmm. That's simply put, I am in the business of saving lives. And so this, our brand story kind of starts out when I was little, my mom put my sisters and I in a summer swimming program and, um, just to keep us out the house. And funny enough, (laughs) my mom, um, learned how to swim too in college and in high school, but Mm -hmm. she took it to get some, you know, extra college credits. (laughs) Right. But and that's how it starts, right? You know, I'm going to just take it because it's free. I'm going to take it just to, you know, do something. But then you never realize in the long run, like, yo, this is really saving my children's lives. Or I don't even think my parents could tell you that this is what this is what's to come. And so when my sister and I, 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 in the summer of 2019, we didn't start Black People Will Swim yet. I just put it out there that, you know, I wanted to teach, you know, 30 people how to swim one summer. And when Mm -hmm. I put it out on Twitter, we had so many people come to us and say, yo, I want to learn how to swim. And so we had one client of ours. She's like, you know, I can't swim because my bones are too dense, girl. I just can't. I'm so scared. And I was just like, what? Where did you hear that from? But, you know, it's like when when the, when a lot has been perpetuated through generations, I mm-hmm. mean, years, at some point people are going to be like, well, I guess this is true, you know? And so from that moment, I did my research and I was like, nah, this can't be this cannot be that somebody is out there. Like, this is a false stereotype in our, in our community. And so I was like, I'm trying, I'm, I was like, okay, so p- this is like, it snowballed into more people asking and more people asking for lessons. And then from there, I was like, you know what? We're just gonna keep it simple. Call it Black People Will Swim. And mm-hmm. maybe I'll change it down the line, but for right now, <laughs> it's gonna be called Black People Will Swim. And you know what? I haven't changed it and I don't intend on changing it anytime soon. So that is our brand story. And I think what takes our takes our brand story a lot a few steps further is the facts. It, you know, seven out of ten black kids drown per day. Mm. Full stop. We drown seven times more than white children. And so, yes, you know, I'm in the business of saving lives and teaching black and brown children how to swim. But there are stats to support that this is a necessity in our community. Yes, certainly. I love that. And one of the things I remember when we were at the workshop, you mentioned, because I I think it's important for people to really understand your story and how you even got started in terms of like you mentioned you use like someone's pool to teach people how to swim and you didn't have everything like some people are thinking you know before I go for funding or anything like that I need to have it all together and I really wanted you to share that and also un- letting people understand why that's not the, not the truth yeah, I think people tend to think that, you know, you need to have it all together, but like, how do you eat an elephant? You eat an elephant a bite at a time, right? Mm-hmm. So you really have to start with what's in your hands, what is in your, um, what it's, what's in your parameters, what's in arm's reach that you can make happen. For me, I started Black People Will Swim um, with just 10, with, not 10, with $5,000 of my own money. Mm. And that was hiring a creative director for, first of all, hiring a business coach to helping me 
um, lay down the platform and setting up a business plan. And once I had that in place, then I started going on um, GoDaddy, purchasing the domain names. Then I hired a creative director. And so people think that, you know, I started with a backyard pool because we was in the middle of the pandemic. Who's going to rent a pool? You know, right. all the pool locations were vaccination um, sites. And so we found a backyard pool and we made it work. And here's the thing too, you know, I'm a Christian. So the Bible says, do never despise humble beginnings. Mm. And so if people, if you do something excellent at a small level, imagine people, now you're, you're, you're making your customers and your community really envision like, yo, if she did it like that at the small level in somebody's backyard, I want to make sure I give her the funds and the resources so that she can take it to the next level and then she could franchise. That's, that's what it's all about, right? You want to, you want to operate. Now I'm I'm not saying in a level of perfection, but with an essence of excellence where you want people to come back for more. Yes. Agreed. So, okay, let's talk about your strategy. And one of the things I learned from you is that you use something called the SOAR method to, and now we're talking all about how to secure grants, y'all. So you use something called the SOAR method. Explain what that is and how it works. Yes. First, I want to give a shout out to this young lady named Ruth I met on Twitter. She actually put me on um, Mm. to the SOAR method but funny enough, um, I just learned about the SOAR method like literally a couple weeks ago, but I was already doing the SOAR method in essence, like as far as writing it down and, and which I'll get to in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's the power of Twitter. I met this, I met this woman on Twitter and she had put me on. And so SOAR method is, um, is S is for situation, O is for obstacles, A is for um, action, and then R is for results. And so you want to essentially paint the scene for, you know, your, the people who are reading that grant application. What does it look like? What's the situation at hand? Um, the obstacles now is kind of like figuring out what are the situations or detriments or issues that are in front of you that's either preventing you from ha- preventing you from fulfilling the goal, or this is kind of where you present yourself as a solution to that obstacle, right? Mm -hmm. And then action is providing what type of actions you'll be taking as an entrepreneur. And then most importantly, results. So you, those two are really important because you really want to showcase that how you are a change maker in your industry. And so with the results, whether it's saving lives, whether it's statistics, whether it's revenue, you know, you really want to showcase the results, um, at the results of what you've done. And would you be willing to like provide an example of how you've been able to use this method uh, with others or with the black people will swim? Sure. Um, so the situation at hand is with black people will swim seven out of 10 black kids drown per day. Um, and most, and even, you know, taking a step further is that, you know, black children drown sev- six or seven times more than white children. And so Mm -hmm. that is a situation at hand, right? And now we painted the scene. We're we're showing these stats. Now, why is that, right? And I can always use a a story. There's there's a ton of stories. And it's sad to even say that. Like, And Mm -hmm. there's so many stories out there of a Black kid going to, you know, get a ball in a lake and they drown because they don't see how deep the lake is or how deep the pond is, right? So that's Mm -hmm. a situation at hand, right? Then we go to the obstacle. Why is it? Why is it that there are more drownings in the Black community than ever before? And this is kind of where we paint the picture and say, well, it's because of swim lessons are expensive, right? There's a lack of swimming pools in Black black and brown communities or low-income communities, lack of representation, and most importantly, lack of education. There is not enough education um, in the hair care or sports arena, sports industry that is teaching black and brown people how to do their hair when it comes down to working out in chlorine, right? Mm-hmm. So that's the obstacles that we, we have in front of us, which is quite a few, but that's like about five. Now the action, what is black people doing to, to helping solve this issue? Black people will swim. We provide low cost swim lessons in the black com- in in our community. 
Okay, so our swim lessons, they range from about, we have a drop-in class for about $20. And then our swim lessons are ranging from about $160 to $180 for six lessons. So that's about $30 to $36 per lesson, which is huge. Right. When you go to YMCA or when you go to a Boys and Girls Club, it's, it's $220, it's $240. Sometimes it's eight weeks, and eight weeks may be a bit overwhelming for someone who's still hesitant on learning the skill. And then from there, and then additionally, we have a, a hair care class called A Breath of Fresh Hair, where we're Ooh. teaching them. Okay. I love that. Okay. <laughs> where we're teaching them how to do their hair. And so we would love to partner with a Shea Moisture or Eden Body Works, where we're teaching um, our clients and our members how to do their hair. And then last but not least, the R. So now that we've been in business for about three years, we've received this amount of funding, this is where we show the results. And so the results are that this summer we've taught 60, this past summer we've taught over 60 individuals how to do their hair. We've employed over 10 people and we're a small business. And we've mm-hmm. also certified, you know, two, um, two to three people to becoming certified instructors. So we are providing job opportunities in the community as well. So this is, this is the result. And people want to see those numbers and see that, yes, this girl is changing lives and making it happen. I love it. I love it. And how important, because I know one of the things you talk about um, is money goals and when you're securing these funding. So, um, you know, some of the things that you have to lay the work for when you're going through these grant application processes, how important is it to have these money goals in your financials laid out? It is so important because you need to let the 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 application or I guess the donors I, I don't I'm trying to find, the grantors you mm-hmm. need to let them know I, I still we need to figure out the word for what are we calling these people because, or these companies <laughs> there we go right um we you need to let these companies know like where's your dollar going because if you're giving somebody twenty thousand dollars they will check in with you a year later to figure out okay what have you done with the money. They will. And and most importantly, it's it's also a publicity thing. So it's like, you know, they check. So it's like you put out an article. Yes, we featured this person. We give this person $30,000. Let's do a year check in with this person. And there is no progress. Mm-hmm. But what they see, you see, they see you got a new car. They see you moved out. They see you got new clothes. You see, so <laughs> it. Right. Listen, and people have done it. OK, right. they've done it with the PPP loans. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's why they, some of them are under the jail. <laughs> not under but, the jail. <laughs> yes, under the jail. Not in jail, they're under the jail. Right. <laughs> but yeah, so I think it's really important to let these companies and donors know where are your funds going? Because if you're not specific on the amount and who they reach and what its purpose, if you're not specific and clear, you will not, you will not receive a cent. You will not receive a red cent. And so for me, I break it down for what is the necessity for the business? The necessities are for me to get a pool. I cannot teach. There is no black people will swim if there's no swim. Right. Right. There's no swim without no pool. And so I explain that rental fees. I break down the necessities of the business. I need I need a location and I need people. And then from there, I break down the cost of what kind of people and how much do they want to be compensated for. This Mm -hmm. is really important. And then also equipment. I can't do my job without a kickboard. I can't do my job without noodles. And everything costs money. So this is why it's important to lay down the groundwork and be explicit because people need to know these numbers. And let's say it, let's say the grant may be for $10,000, but it takes $20,000 to actually run a program. You never know. They may actually give you that extra money. Mm. So it's really important to be explicit and it helps you in the long run as a business owner to know where you got to know your business, like the back of your hand. And so it really gives you, it, it makes you seem more professional and an expert in your business. No one should know your business more than you. Agreed. And so when we talk about this, um, having the plan, what would you say is when someone should start to look for grants? Would it be in the starting phase, the idea phase, or how far along in their business, or it just varies? 
Great question. I think you should start looking as soon as possible. I think first understanding what your business is and have your business plan first. You know, your who, your what, your why. You know, if you have a little logo, if you have your brand vision and mission and values, I think once you have that down, then you start with the logo and then you'll start applying. I, I'll, I'll be frank with you. I started mm-hmm. Black People Will Swim November 2019. And then maybe I started applying to grants and I got my first grant within four months. Wow. And, yeah. So I was, okay, I'll be, I'll, let me correct myself. I was in a pitch. I, I got, I was entered into my first pitch competition after, after, shortly after I formed Black People Will Swim. So it's never too soon. And it was less than six months. Mm-hmm. Then after that, my second one, you want to, I can't even believe this now that I'm telling you. What? My what? second one was Essence Magazine and Pine Sol. Wow. Yes. My second one. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, and that's like, um, just that attitude. I'm going to go for it. Yeah. That attitude. I'm going to go for it. How did that feel? It feels good. I feel like a badass. I feel like yes. you did that, right? You did it. <laughs> I did it. And it's so important because it's so important to just go for it because you never, ever know. Um, just recently, we just won um, the Quest Rookie Challenge. And I tell people all the time, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And the Quest Rookie Challenge, they gave us $20,000. And wow. I was persistent. I was like, and mind you, I was on vacation, (laughs) but right. But the whole point is just like, you got to stay ready for opportunities like this because you never know when they're going to come, which is why, you know, teaching, um, when I taught that workshop the other day, teaching you guys the SOAR method was important, Mm -hmm. but also providing those worksheets as well. So you have those app, do you have those responses ready to go? And so with Essence being my second one, I didn't win. But guess what? I walked away with $15,000. That's so amazing. And also when you were teaching that workshop, I forgot to mention this, y'all, because Kalana like gave us a great workshop. And then in the end, we're like wrapping it up. She wins $2,000 grant. Like, yes! in, in <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, she has to be. But it was just like, oh, my God. And even my friend was there. She was doing the virtual and she was so inspired. But even earlier, when you talk about the numbers, sharing the numbers, I think it's so important, especially within our community to see that because that ignited the fire in someone like literally she went working on her business plan like the next day. So just from your workshop. Yes, that's awesome. And, and, And that's the thing, like if I if I was tight lipped, you know, mm-hmm. about it, it's like, people were like, did she really? But honestly, mm-hmm. the information is out there. If you Google, like, and if you look at, cause every company that's giving a large lump sum of money, they announce it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so the information is out there. So there's no need for me to really, there's no need for me to lie at all. But right. most importantly, I taught that workshop because I don't want us to be the only, I don't want to be the only mm-hmm. one. You know, I want more people to say, yo, like I got funding because yes, m- more black women are the fastest race to open businesses, but are we the, are we the fastest ones to sustain them? Mm-hmm. Right. You know, are, are we sustaining our businesses? Do we have enough equipment or whatever or resources or funding to sustain them? You know, and that's important. Um, and so I'm going to keep in this and that receiving that grant. Listen, I'm going to apply for any type of grant. I don't care if it's five hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, fifty dollars. I'm <laughs> <laughs> anything. I'm applying. I'm applying for it. You know, because that two thousand dollars right there can help me provide free swim lessons for somebody else. That's mm-hmm. gonna help me save another life. That's about ten lives right there. Mm-hmm. Certainly, I mm-hmm. love it. And so, one of the things you have said is staying ready, so you don't have to get ready. And you did share with us um, a grant application template, but I also want to talk about some of the things of that one should have to stay ready looking for grants and just staying organized. So what would you say are some things that have in place prior to applying? Let's talk about that first. And then we're going to talk about um, some ways that they can organize what they have. 
That's this is so important. I think that you are asking the good questions. <laughs> Thank you. I do my homework. <laughs> um, it's really important that you know every si- where every single red cent is going. Mm-hmm. Like you have to know the financial um health of your business. What does it take to run your business? How much does it take to run your business? Um, because if you don't, then you won't really know. You'll be you'll be blowing money like you a baller, mm-hmm. and you're not. You're a small business, and let me tell you something: ten thousand dollars is not a lot of money. It's mm-hmm. not. If you have a, t- let me tell you something. I remember one time I had a friend. She was like, "Oh my gosh, um, Palana's winning so many grants. I hope she's not doing nothing crazy with the money." And I was what? like, "Excuse me." Do you know how much it costs to have a team of five right. with paying them five hundred dollars? Right. If and mind you, not everyone on my team is making a lot of money. This is a side hustle. This is a side business for people to either gain experience or people are just tied to the mission. But if I'm paying, if I have a team of five and I'm paying them five hundred dollars a month, that's just a monthly stipend. How much mm-hmm. is that? Twenty five hundred. Mm-hmm. Twenty five hundred. Now you get you receive a ten thousand dollar grant. Twenty ten t- ten divided by twenty five hundred is what? That's mm-hmm. gonna last me for how many months? Four months to be exact, right? Mm-hmm. So if I'm not, if so, that's only four months worth of salary. So now I got to make sure that I'm still bringing in money to making sure that I have a budget to have them here, not just for the summer, because our summer is technically three months, but have them here till, you know, December at least. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's really important that you know the cost of your product, how much does it take to make it? How much does it take to market it? How much does it take to get it into the hands of the individual? And most importantly, how much does it take to run your business? Your social media person, your creative director, your swim instructors, you know, these costs add up. So yes, we'll receive a lot of grant funding, but it also takes a lot of money to run the business as well. Yep. So knowing your finance, so some things to have in place prior to applying is, you know, you mentioned the business plan, knowing your finances like the back of your hand, anything else that they should know before they start to apply for these grants? I would also say um, two things I would recommend people to have before applying to these grants is a lawyer, a business lawyer, and most importantly, an accountant. Um, Mm -hmm. Thank God for me, those two are Black women. So I'm really, really happy about that. Um, Ivy is my business lawyer and Ashley Harlan, Natrice. No, Ashley Natrice Harlan. I got to get it right. She (laughs) is our, um, she is our CFO. And yes, we have a CFO and because she understands the vision. So Black People Will Swim is only a small piece of the vision. So Right now, well, that's that's for another question, but it is really important to have those um, have those pe- people in place and also maybe even having a business coach and an advisor. And there's free services out there that provide you a free business coach to help you um, tweak your responses. Let's say you may not have it all together. For me, I'm a journalist, so it was easy for me to write and really that's what's helped me because I'm a journalist. My writing background mm-hmm. has helped me tremendously, but not everybody's a great writer. And so having a business coach or having a grant writer um, can, can help you go a long way, can do wonders. And speaking of having a grant writer and, you know, those other amazing people on your team, one of the things um, I asked about is having being organized. And you talked about funding and, you know, a business is expensive to run, Mm -hmm. Um, but also how you've set up yourself to really be the leader in, you know, going after the money and having an amazing team, maybe handling some things and delegating. Yeah, that's so important. You want to create systems and have processes in place so that, you know, if anything was to happen, somebody can come in and pick up the ball and just run for it. Mm -hmm. So, for example, for me, like I have um, not only do I have an employee or contractor handbook, I wouldn't say employee handbook because everyone's a contractor, but I also have like an assistant an admin, an administrative assistant handbook. So in the event that we do, you know, my administrative assistant needs to leave or she needs to go back to school. I am, we still have processes and protocols in place so that we're not starting from scratch. We're starting from 
a baseline, a foundation. Um, so it's really important to be organized. So what is it that you need to making sure you need you, you are organized? Have an understanding of your numbers, have an understanding of where your EIN documents are, your business licenses are, your responses are. Um, and then I also have a worksheet of like, what is our operational um, cost? How much does it how much does it cost to operate the business? You mm-hmm. know, our revenue, our profit and loss, all of that. Like, I feel like I'm rambling, but it's really important to have no. a better understanding of who's everyone's role, what is everyone's role, what they do, and how do they support the bigger picture? Because you're a small business, so you don't have time to pay people to lollygag. And right. Really, no, not at all. <laughs> Agreed. So, Paulana, in this process, uh, you've applied for several grants. You've won several grants. Um, What are some common themes that you've seen uh, are requirements or people are not thinking of? Any insider tips you would give? I think for starters is realizing how does this benefit the community? You really have to think of the bigger picture. How will your business serve and better your community? And then also think about the profit margins, like how much does it cost to run the business? But then is it scalable? Um, Now, I'm only talking from the receiving end. So Mm -hmm. that's me assuming and also having discussions of why people chose us. And these are questions that I ask a lot, too, because it'll help me perfect my responses and tweak my responses for future applications. Cause I'll be honest, I applied to a lot of grants for Mm -hmm. all the ones that I've won. I've applied to triple the amount I want. I need people to understand if there are 10 grant applications and I've applied to all 10, I'll probably win five, but that's because I've applied to 10. Mm-hmm. It's not because I'm ten, I'm five out of five, right? So it's really important that that's one. Actually, that's number one. It's really important to throw yourself in the in the ring. I'm not gonna tell myself no. They got to tell me no before I leave, right? Then Ooh. two, understand what is how is your business benefiting the community? How are you providing job opportunities? How are you generating revenue? Because they want to make sure that you are a profitable business. Right. Some people don't care if you're a profitable business, but I think is but a lot of them do. And I think it's really important to showcase how profitable and how you've used this money to snowball into bigger into bigger snowballs, into an avalanche at this point, right? Mm-hmm. Um and um a third one is understanding the power of social media and really investing in it. Trust me, as they want to see. They want to see your business in action, hands mm. down. So it is important that you are capturing photos. Listen, for every swim class, I got a photographer there. Great investment. Okay. Every, yes. And he's not cheap. He is not cheap. But guess what? It's an investment. My photographer charges us $420 for every visit. Can you imagine? Wow. wow. Right. That's a lot. I mean, it's that's, a lot but it's worth it. But it's so worth it because why? Because people want to see your product. They want to see your business in action. I think since I've had him, our photos have been everywhere at almost every single publication. Mm-hmm. You understand? And so people want to see it in action. And I'm paying for a quality of work because there's not enough of black of great quality content of black swimmers. Right. So you really want to figure, so you really want to make sure that you are making that investment. So those, those are the three things. Um, it is pricey, but guess what? It's worth it in the end. You got to make those sacrifices. Yes. And any things that people can talking about, um, what happens after you secure funding? I know you mentioned earlier that sometimes the people follow up, like, what are you doing? What did you do with the money? Did you do what you say you're going to do? Um, anything else that you want to mention that people can expect after securing funding? Yeah, I say track everything, Mm -hmm. track everything. And what I mean by that is make sure you have like your W nine, make sure you have like the forms of when they gave the money because, okay, uncle Sam is going to want his cut. (laughs) Right. <laughs> Make sure you track everything, but then also not just from a grant perspective, but showcasing how the grant has benefited your company. I've said that earlier and I can't stress that enough. Mm-hmm. They're going to follow up and ask you, OK, what did you do with the money? How has this benefited you? You know what? What have you done? 
and people will always ask that. And it is imperative that you, you explain how this is benefited. Great advice. And now that we've discussed all of the resources, well, all of the tips on, you know, grants, having your brand story, um, where can one go to look for business grants? Where do I start? <laughs> There's so many places to go. How much time do we have? We, we got have time. iFund Women. We have Hello Alice. We have Black Girl Ventures. We have Female um, Founder Collective. Then there's some free resources. Free, um, I found women, and by, by the way, they're all free, by the way. Just want to know. Then there's mm-hmm. Her Agenda. They're always listing out grants. But then there's also score.org where they partner you up with a free business coach. A free business coach. Wow. Okay? Which is amazing because sometimes you need somebody that you can bounce ideas off of, right? And so that business coach is there to help you. And then most importantly... I tell you this all the time. Joe Biden just recently signed a new SBA um, bill where they're giving more funding to small businesses. But the SBA, the Small Business Association, is not interacting with entrepreneurs. They're not going straight to the people. They Mm -hmm. are going to the companies and the organization that go straight to the people. So mm. it is vital. If you don't listen to me, and we need to bookmark this in the interview. If you do not do anything else, get involved with your com- local library, your local community business centers, and your local chambers of commerce. That is vital because that is where the money, that's where their money is going to. Mm. Okay. That is, so there's CD, CFDIs, that's community um, f- Funds Development Institute. I could be wrong, but they're called CFDIs. <laughs> Look it up. And that mm-hmm. is where the money goes to. Okay. And so you want to make sure you are connected and you are networking with those people. You are up in shoulders because guess what? They are the ones who dictate where the money goes. Yes. Oh, yes. Because I have my notes here from the workshop with community development financial institutions. Yes. Oh, CDF. Oh, okay. Community Development Financial Institute. Okay. So I had it. I had it. I have my letters. Before. You had it. Yeah. Love it. it. Yeah. Because these people know where the money's going. And if they see your business in action, they're like, listen, I'm in the community and I see her firsthand. Let's give us some money. <laughs> listen, right. you'd be surprised. This is how a lot of white people do it too. Right. Mm-hmm. Give us game. Give us game. Okay. This is nothing new. It's just new to y'all. But this is what they've been doing the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yes. And one of the things you did mention at your workshop was, um, you know, checking out the resources at these alma maters. Um, we pay for these degrees. So using them as a resource. Yes. I tell people all the time, at the end of the day, your college works for me. Okay. <laughs> I paid my tuition. I'm going to go back to career services and ask for something. Okay. Right. G- give me something. And there's the alumni association as well. Get involved. Why are people so scared to get involved with the alumni association? It is crucial. You never know who knows who. Yes. Agreed. And this has been so amazing. And I know someone is a lot of people are listening and they're like, "Okay, I got what I need to. I know what I need to do. And one side of that, they're like, "Okay, I'm going to get into action. But there's another side of it is that people may feel intimidated by the process. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give someone who is feeling that way and maybe even considering outsourcing? Like, just talk about that um, versus doing it themselves if they're feeling that way. Hmm. Uh, that's just, that seems like a like a two part question. So the first part, I'm going to address the scared part and then mm-hmm. I'm going to address the outsourcing, whether they should hire someone or outsource. OK, so the first part. All right. A good prophet. His name is Meek Mill once said scared money don't make no money. If I ever go broke, I'm going to take, take your, your money. money. OK, right. Listen, if you scared to apply someone else ain't Mm. and that fear you let your fear hide you from that spot that's somebody else's somebody else is gonna take that spot if somebody else their name is paulana lamonier and she gonna take because you scared it's true scared money don't make no money if you are scared you are never gonna make any money if you are scared to jump out and you never know i kid you not i remember the night that i applied for the essence um the essence um pine salt pitch contest and i was struggling to finish it i was struggling mm-hmm. but i did it 
I I was like, oh my gosh, Lord, I don't know what I'm writing, but I did it. And so it's important that you never know where it's going to take you. So you got to feel the fear, fear. It's okay to be scared. No one's telling you not to be scared, but I think, what do you do after you feel that fear? You have to do it. You got to act on it. Okay. That's the first part. And then the second part too, is if you don't feel comfortable doing these applications yourself, or even these responses, you feel like you need a second opinion. That is okay. Let me tell you something. All great people, great athletes, great minds, they all have what? A mentor, a coach, Mm -hmm. an advisor. Okay. Don't let no, Serena Williams, she has a coach. So it's okay to seek advisement and speak to someone to give you counsel on it. Go speak to an editor, go hire grant writers. Now I'm telling one thing, grant writers are expensive. So you got to make sure, are you ready to, have you done the work first to bring somebody on or at least edit your edit your work. Mm-hmm. So for me, yes, I'm a great writer. I'm going to say, I'm going to say I'm a good writer. I'm not a great, I'm a good writer, <laughs> but I have an editor to help me, um, revise my edits, help me think of more clever things, make it more, sound more, um, sound more good and enticing, um, to get my point across. Great advice. Straight, no chase. I love that. Scare money, don't make money. And, you know, outsourcing, if you don't feel comfortable with it, love it. And this has been so amazing. I wrote down so many notes still again. And I know people who are listening are gaining such value. As an entrepreneur, what has been the best risk that you've taken for yourself? The best risk I've taken for myself was betting on myself. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've never, I've never, me betting on myself has never steered me wrong because I know what I can do. Um, and there are times where I fall short, but I know for next time and I would rather always take a bet on myself because I'd rather let myself down than let anybody else let me down. Mm. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing that I've done was take a bet on myself and set the vision. And, you know, believe it or not, some people are not going to believe in you, honey. Let me tell you something. When I started Black People Will Swim, people were telling me to change the name, the Mm -hmm. color, the this, the that. And I'm so glad that I didn't. Because now it's those people who are asking me for funding advice. Mm, Tables turn. Listen, it's those people who are asking me, yo, how did you do this? How did you do that? Mm -hmm. So you, listen, like I said, never despise humble beginnings. Um, And so I did it. And that was the bet that I took on myself. I love it. And speaking of betting on yourself and all of the amazing things that you're doing with Black, Black People Will Swim, If you could just share more with um, what's upcoming, how can people take part of what you're offering or learn more? Sure. So right now we are, so as I mentioned earlier, Black People Will Swim, we have, we are the recipient of the Quest Rookie Challenge provided by Quest Nutrition. And so we are, thanks to Quest Nutrition, we've been able to um, launch our swim program this summer. And we are in the process of turning Black People Will Swim from an LLC to a nonprofit. Wow. Yes. So Black People Will Swim will become a nonprofit. Um, We know that process is already long as is, but thanks to Mm -hmm. Quest Nutrition, we'll be able to, and this grant will be able to expedite that process a whole lot faster. That's number one. Number two, we are working on our six week pilot, six week uh, summer program, um, which will be launching hopefully in the summer. I'm not going to give an exact date as of yet. (laughs) Okay. Um, and then most importantly, we're working on other businesses. I started my second business. It is called Swimming in Color. Oh, love it. Yes. So it's more inclusive. I mean, we know it, we Black People Swim is specifically, you know, we're here to cater specifically Black for Black people. Not saying mm-hmm. we're only for Black people, but specifically to highlight the disparities in the swimming community. But there are so many other disparities in the Latinx community, in the mm-hmm. Native, Amer- Native American community. We don't even have the numbers for that. And so Mm -hmm. Swimming in Color is really an umbrella brand um, to really support and amplify the efforts of Black People Will Swim, but take it to a broader scale. So um, that is essentially, you can say our our parent company or our sister or brother brand to Mm -hmm. Black People Will Swim. And so um, that is what we are working on right now, which has been fun. 
Um, so I guess you could say I got a three-year-old and I got a newborn. <laughs> love it. Pop it out, babies. We love it. Listen, okay, we getting busy in the kitchen. We getting busy. <laughs> well, busy in the pool, I would say. Yeah, we getting busy in the pool. We popping these babies out. I love it. And Paulona, it, um, at the moment, Black People Will Swim is only offered in New York. Yes, right now we're only in New York. I wish we could do it like so many people have been asking for Black People Will Swim in their local neighborhoods, and it's beautiful. Um, it is. It is really beautiful. So we'll see. I mean, listen, I'm going to go where the wind and the wave and the Lord takes yeah. me. Yes. So, um, yeah. So, but yeah, we're only in New York for Long Island, New York, to be exact. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So as you mentioned, you are birthing another baby, uh, a business, and I am sure your plate is full, but you're managing and you're doing it so well. Someone who is listening, what keeps you organized? So what are some of your favorite tools or resources that you've used in this journey that keep you organized and sane? Uh, I write everything down. So there's not a moment in time when I'm not writing something down. I write everything down. And most importantly, I use platforms like Asana, Notion. Um, For my team, I use Notion. For my full-time job, I use Basecamp. And so it just kind of holds me accountable for my deadlines and things that are due. Um, So it's really important for us to um, have that, kind of have yourself organized and figure out like what's important. And I kind of um, separate my tasks. So like what's important versus what is urgent or what's mm-hmm. priority. Um, because it may be, it may be important, but it's not urgent or it's not a priority. So you mm-hmm. want to make sure like that you have that down pack. So like finances, the finances, the financial health of black people will swim is always going to be priority. I'm always going to set time for that because if I set time for prioritize other things without the money, I can't, you can't work here. I can't work. Right. There's no business. So that's what's really important. Thank you for sharing that. And we will be sure to put those in the show notes. And we did not miss that. She's also working full time, y'all. So she is killing it. You're killing it. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Polana, what does it mean to you to be black in business? To be black in business, it is empowering. It's a reminder of that no idea is dumb. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a ton of ideas out there that people get funding for, right? Um, and so it just goes to remind me that there is no idea that is dumb or too niche. I think that's what it means to be Black in business. Because if you are serving and solving a need, solving mm-hmm. an issue in the community, honey, the people will come to you. Because it's not just, if you've experienced this issue, trust me, there are 10,000 other people who've experienced that same issue. And so being Black in business, it simply means that I'm putting my people on to the latest I am serving them deeply. And most importantly, I'm, I'm, I'm edifying them. I'm helping them be better. I felt that. Thank you for sharing that. And finally, people are listening and they're going to want to know how can they connect with you? How can they find you and how can they support you? So please share. Yeah, so you can find us at blackpeoplewillswim.com. We are Black People Will Swim across all platforms. And then if you want to connect with me, I am It's Paulana. That's I-T-S, Paulana, P-A-U-L-A-N-A. I'm sure my girl will have it here in the show show notes. Yes. Um, but yeah, blackpeoplewillswim.com. And feel free to email us at blackpeoplewillswim at gmail.com. Love it. Paulana, thank you so much for being on the Black to Business podcast. This has been such a treat and we appreciate you for all that you're doing in the community and also pouring into us today. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. This was great. This was really informative. You've asked a lot of great questions to help people um, really secure the bag. So I really hope that people listen to this on their way to work, on their commute, or even working out because I know that um, I really want to see more businesses secure that funding. Scare money don't make money. You heard Paulana. And she is exactly right. She gave us so much value. And she also gave you the blueprint today on how to secure funding through business grants simply by sharing your story. So if you haven't already, first things first is you want to make sure that you have your business affairs in order and your story. And remember that you also want to know how what you are doing is going to impact the community. These are the things that are important for the grant application process. 
I hope that this was valuable for you. We've listed all of the resources mentioned and where you can find grants in the episode show notes at blacktobusiness.com forward slash 96. Thank you so much for listening and be sure to pay it forward and share this episode with someone who you know will find value. Chat with you next week, same time, same place.